So Paula, uh, there was a big change for Abby Donovan in this season of Ray Donovan. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, this big life change that Abby went through uh, this season? Can I talk about, oh yeah, I can. The show's aired, uh, yeah, so. It's been a while. <laughs> I know. Um, well, Abby died and we sort of meet Ray in season, episode one of season five and she's already dead. And then the, you know, they, the, the sort of format of the show is, is kind of time is elastic and we do a lot of flashing back and we find out how Abby dies. Mm -hmm. I'm curious um, because uh, obviously you've been playing this role for a long time. Um, you didn't quite say goodbye to her, but in a sense, you know, I mean, her life is over. Um, so there's no more, you know, development that she'll have in the future. Was that difficult for you saying goodbye to this character in a sense? Yeah, more than I could have actually imagined. It was so difficult and, and continued to be. It was, um, you know, there are characters that really get under your skin and sort of parallel with you. And uh, she was for sure one. And I think, you know, we have said goodbye to her as an audience. And for me, I don't think we'll be returning in any kind of revenant sort of form, you know? I think we've done that and 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 it was time to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, in that sense, um, can you talk a bit about looking back on the show um, and what the experience was like for you on it and, and, and saying goodbye to the cast and, and the crew and all of that? Um, it was a tough and incredibly challenging and nourishing experience. I learned a lot as an actor. Um, I think you always do when you have to really dig deep to play character over long narrative arc. I, uh, yeah, it, it was it was like saying goodbye to family. It was really hard for me, and uh, and it was hard to sort of leave that organizing principle in my life as well. You know, I think being the sort of you know, in some ways, Abby is the nucleus of that family. You know, it's the show's called Ray Donovan, but she's sort of the big heart center of it. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of the emotional. So also, you know, removing the female was sort of was a tough thing for me. And it was it was tough at that time, too. There were a lot of things politically, et cetera, that were going on that I felt sort of added to some. some they personally added to some of the, the painful feeling of that. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly within the context of the show, uh, you really understand, um, you know, how much Abby means to Ray and uh, how much he feels her loss. Can you talk a bit about that? I think, um, well, we're looking at it through the prism of flash, but, you know, sort of its memory. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of rose colored glasses of, of those flashbacks. I mean, we shot them a little more stylized and there's kind of this magical glow but it did, i think it was a sort of a fill in for the audience too of how how meaningful she is of what you know th they needed to move story forward they had to move the show to new york how are they going to do that and they find that this was the way to really what was going to be the thing that put the ray's character in the most jeopardy and makes him completely change his life mm -hmm. and that's losing his wife um, yeah, so she's incredibly meaning, meaningful, I think, for all of them. And we got, I think we got to see that pretty nicely in the season. You mentioned that it's through rose-colored glasses, and, and since it is all from his memory, um, and certainly, I mean, that is something that happens in life, um, did that, as a performer, did that affect the way that you uh, played Abby in those scenes? Sometimes, yeah. I think there was a kind of a heightened, we... I wanted to have this sort of heightened reality, a kind of almost like, hard to describe, but almost like they were a little bit on drugs or something, you know, like a, a great sort of high adrenaline when, when they were in the good times, you know, and, and sort of that kind of feeling like there was nobody else in the world, you know? Um, even when that you know when we we come back and it's episode one and they're driving over Mulholland and we're we're cutting straight from uh, the final of 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 season of season four, um, 
and they have a crash. There's sort of that feeling that everything's kind of like, this is the best it's ever going to be, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and they defied great odds. And then this sort of, this happens and the news, cut, you know, the news sort of slowly leaks out from the audience of what's going on with Abby. So. Did you know, I mean, because I mean, last season you had this cancer storyline. Did you know ahead of time, I mean, how they were going to um, kill you off? I mean, was it a mystery to you or? It, it was, it wasn't, it was, I, I had suspected that, you know, that was sort of on the cards, you know, you sort of get a feeling, you get a kind of a, I don't know, something, you know, the, the air changes in the room sometimes. Um, but I don't think they had quite decided. And yeah, so I find out um, before, obviously before we started shooting, you know, a few months before we started shooting, and um, was able to sort of prepare and also talk to the writers a lot about how I wanted to do this, that if we were gonna do a cancer storyline, let's not do the pretty sort of tele television version of that. I wanted something to be very poignant and hard hitting and meaningful. And, you know, I'm not the kind of actress that sort of wanted to cop out of that. So we we talked about it and they agreed that we could sort of show some of the more, you know, the, the very painful side of, of what cancer does. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, let's just shoot her in the head and call it a day, you know? Right. Well, I mean, I'm certainly uh, when you're doing a, a storyline like that, uh, you uh, do you feel a responsibility to people who have seen loved ones go through this? Or, I mean, you know, just about everybody in the world at some point gets cancer, right. um, unfortunately. Yeah, so I felt a massive responsibility. I felt that it would, um, I took it so seriously that that I do this well and right and in an honoring and um, you know a precise way yeah and and, us, and it was sort of an homage to a, a very dear dear friend of mine um, who I lost five years ago mm -hmm. so and I was really up close and personal with that and 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 saw it so you know when people ask me did you research it yeah I think all of us have you know We've all been through it. Yeah, unfortunately, I think everybody has I lost know. someone to that. Um, Awful. There, um, you, you had a, uh, some good episodes this season. One of them that uh, stuck out to me was, um, I think it was the second episode where it flashes back to your and Ray's 21st wedding anniversary. Can you talk a bit about that one? Remind me, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while for me too, but I remember you guys, oh like, you, you went to Vegas and- uh, Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Right, right. We go to Vegas, um, and Abby's starting to have these sort of odd, kind of auditory, uh, uh, strange things happening. Something's wrong with her brain. She knows it. She knows something's wrong, and uh, and we find out in a hotel room in Vegas that they that she's you know she has a seizure, and then it goes from there. I think there was a lovely something something about her at that time where she sort of was in this place with Ray where we're not you know there's there was a kind of a settling you know a sort of a uh, an acceptance of the life you know she was really in on some things at that point you know. Um, so there was this kind of moving forward where the character didn't did no longer feel like like the antagonist, you know, like the wife trope. And um, it was a lovely episode. There were some lovely scenes in the, in that. But uh, but you know, some of the some of the ones that I've been talking about a little bit more are just the more obvious ones. But thanks for thanks for saying that. It was fun oh, to yeah. shoot. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, I mean, talk a bit more about uh, some of those more obvious episodes, if if you would like. Well, there was, uh, or at least ones that were highlights for you. Yeah, I mean, it was all sort of an interesting kind of season for me because for, you know, for once her agenda was her, you know, she, it, was, it was about her. Whereas, you know, her character and these characters are usually there to serve the character, the titular character. Um, so they don't have a lot of their own agency and this was something where I sort of got my own kind of little, little movie, 
you know, it was sort of a storyline. Uh, you know, I think they really wanted to have it to be, but it just kind of kept taking the energy and it kept feeling like the most interesting story that we were going to tell. And if we were going to say goodbye to a beloved character, you know, let's focus on it. So, yeah, so I think some of the scenes were dying in episode eight in that horses episode. I loved the ice skating stuff. I mean, I loved a lot of it. There was a lot of work sort of around that. I was, you know, not, I was kind of losing weight and trying to gain it quickly because we were playing with time and I didn't have a sort of a straight, if I'd had three months to just be Cancer Abbey, but I was healthy and then not healthy and then healthy again. So it was very, um, it was all over the place for me in sort of my own preparation. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I was going to have, was that difficult that having to play that physicality of it and, and losing the weight? And Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't fun. Right. But. <laughs> yeah. We, something else we've all gone through. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it wasn't like, um, yeah, because I sort of wanted to be, I wanted to be really weak. I wanted to be very not myself. I wanted my body to feel very different. And uh, I had to sort of, I just beat myself up a bit, really, mm -hmm. to do that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I guess the reason why that stuck out to me, that one about your wedding anniversary, was that, um, you know, I mean, so often, uh, when you lose somebody, you think about the good times that you would have had with somebody. And certainly a wedding anniversary is that. And it just sort of made me think about the relationship that you and Ray have had throughout these five years. Yeah. Can you talk yeah. a bit about that relationship that the two of you had? What, as actors or as as characters? As characters. And I mean, as I was going to ask as with Leah. I Shiver mean, they're both, well. you know, when you do something for six, you know, because it's been six years since we did the pilot. And when you do something... There is a party that's married to that person and there is, you know, this is my part, you know, Liev is my partner, my, you know, my, he's my acting partner. We're saying sort of this long, slow goodbye to each other as actors. And I think one of the things that was the most exciting for both of us on that show was when we did get to do things together, this very, it's just very obvious chemistry, you know, for, for the pair of us as actors. Um, so, you know, I was savoring all of that, you know, knowing that this was sort of the last time I would do these things, you know, see these people be with this crew, you know? Um, and it was, you know, it's always, these, these roles mark a very important time in your life, you know? It's not, six years is a long time to play one person and, and, and to really, like I said, you know, have that as your guiding principle in your life. Um, and the characters, you know, are so complicated. Uh, he's, it's almost like, you know, I've always said, it's like she does his feeling for him because he's not capable because of the abuse and, and everything else that he suffered. So she's, she's the one that sort of the emotional burden is on. So you have that too as a, as a real dynamic in, in your work that you carry a lot of that around. You know, it's sort of, like I said, when you play characters for this long, they really do get under your skin. There's no, there's no way around it. You know, Liev and I were joking the other day that um, we, we saw each other, you know, we were saying, well, when you play a depressed character for six years, you funny how you end up being depressed or, you know, it's funny how that happens, but it does. Um, but it, you know, it's, it's a time that I'm very, very grateful for. And, and, and I feel like it's, I was able to do some, some work that I, that maybe wasn't expected that I was able to do. You know, I, I feel very um, heartened that I was able to, kind of dig into this character and ask for more agency as a woman, you know. Are there things about Abby that you'll keep with you? I mean, as, as these years go on, since you did play her for so long and, and since she did have such a huge impact on you? I'm sure there will. I mean, I think it's hard to avoid because it's, there. you know, 
they they've become iconic characters weirdly you know there's some you know that all that sort of who the fuck are you ray and you know you got a hole in your heart and all that stuff people you know people come up to me and first of all they're crying because i died and you know they've 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 had that experience they and they're sad that the character's gone and then also they want to just do the accent and and use those uh you know get me to say those things so there's <laughs> Yeah, she, you know, she sort of will remain, I think. And I think there's a place in the show that I think you, there'll be a feeling that when she's, that she's not there, her, her absence will be felt. Um, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, you've had a lot of good roles uh, throughout your career. Um, one that I wanted to ask you about, just because you uh, received a SAG Ensemble nomination for it was on Deadwood. Can you talk a bit about what that recognition meant to you? Um. I think that show was ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. And I think that ha had it been a little bit later, there would have been a lot more of that kind of recognition. Mm -hmm. the re I, don't do, I don't do anything I do for the recognition. I do it because it's, I really, I do, the recognition is that people respond to it and you, and you can get, you can touch, touch nerves and make people feel and, and and tell great stories, you know? And that's what I learned from David Milch was how to tell a really, really ripping yarn, you know? Um, Trixie was a phenomenal character and sort of, I think what really made an actress of me um, was playing that role and working with a writer of that genius um, and with those actors. And I've been very, very, very lucky to sort of you know, land and, you know, but I think there's a, there's a space that you have to create for yourself to play characters like that. I think there's a kind of a bearing of the soul that has to happen. Um, it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of dogged persistence to get people to listen to where you want to go, you know? And yeah. Uh, luckily I've just, you know, hung around long enough <laughs> that I've, you know, been able to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I was I was sad to see Abby go, uh, but I hope that this isn't the last time I'll get to talk to you about uh, some great role that you have coming up. Uh, Paul yeah. Malcolmson, thank you so much. You're so welcome. It's great to see you again. Same here. Have a good one. Bye.